It was once an outpost of camels and nomads. Now the ships of the desert come with fuel-injected four-wheel drives. The desert has become a weekend diversion for these sons of nomads. In just one generation, they've turned a wasteland into an international trading hub. Beyond the sand dunes is a city unlike anything the Middle East has ever seen. We are a unique experience. We have mixed the Orient, the West, and the Arabic civilization all together in one formula to produce something what we call Dubai. We do not have the pyramids, we do not have the Taj Mahal, we do not have the Petra of Jordan, but in our unique way, we have created a new formula Part of that formula is being an oasis of hedonism in the Arab world. Dubai is a state of the conservative Islamic country, the United Arab Emirates. But every night its clubs fill with the United Nations of rich fun seekers. Arabs come from neighbouring Iraq and Saudi Arabia to do things they could never do at home. Businessmen come from the West to make money from the Arabs. Women come from Russia and Asia to make money from everyone. It's been a wild few years for this Middle Eastern boomtown, but for many, the party's over. thousands and thousands of unfinished properties lying around on the desert, uh, unattended. Uh, people either just dump them or they can't make the payments. It's a big uh, dilemma for everybody now. Let's pick a problem. Let's, let's, let's pick. Let's pick the dolls. Which one do you want? Cem Bayulan is a Turkish investment banker. The little bear. He arrived in Dubai three years ago when the boom was at its height. For the past year, he and his American wife, Cheren, have been struggling to survive the crash. We actually signed for the uh, loan of this big house and then found out I was pregnant and then the crash happened. So it all happened one after another. It was quite a stressful time for us, for sure. The global recession sent giant cracks through Dubai's glittering facade. The city went into panic in November when the state-owned property developer defaulted. Many foreigners who came to make easy money have fled the country. So many people lost their jobs and subsequently their homes, their cars, etc. One thing uh, that differs Dubai probably from the rest of the world is this is an expat-driven uh, country, so people actually have the option of just leaving everything behind and go back to their country. Some just drove to the airport and dumped their cars, leaving their businesses and debts behind. Their impounded cars are now gathering sand inside the city's police academy. Now, no one can say how many people left this way, but estimates run into the hundreds, even the thousands. And there's good reason why some people would want to flee. Because if you can't pay your debts here, even if you bounce a cheque, you won't just be stopped from leaving the country, you can end up in jail. Dubai's prisons now hold scores of once successful entrepreneurs who didn't escape in time. When the market crashed and their businesses folded, some were imprisoned to force them to pay their debts. Others were jailed over financial disputes. Australian businessman Marcus Lee spent nine months in prison and is now on bail. He and his wife Julie are confident the charges will be dismissed, but in the meantime they can't leave the country. 
The case and their lives have been on hold for several months because the government witness keeps failing to turn up at court. Like others trapped in Dubai, the Lees declined to be interviewed for this story for fear of jeopardising the case. I heard some Westerners in jail that got tuberculosis or, you know, infectious diseases. Imagine those people two years from now, three years from now. They, they, they might die over there. Dubai is not uh, an open society. It's not an open country. It's really, really a cage. And believe me when I say that, it is a cage. Hervé Jobert escaped by boat before he was arrested for debts he claimed he never owed. He now lives in the US state of Florida. I tried to fight it, but in Dubai there's no way, absolutely no way. I realized that quickly, that you, you cannot fight it. You cannot have a fair hearing, you cannot have a fair trial. If you are in that kind of situation, you are going to lose. Like Dubai itself, the court system appears modern and sophisticated. At this recent opening of a new courthouse, we were shown the latest in high-tech facilities and user-friendly software. But foreigners are now finding that the laws they enforce have changed little since Dubai was a desert outpost. There is no such thing as bankruptcy, financial disputes are treated as crimes. When they put you in jail, it's not for three or five years. They put you in jail until you pay what they want you to pay. So if you don't pay or if you cannot pay, or you be regardless of the reason, they keep you in jail indefinitely. Jobert came to Dubai to develop recreational submarines for tourists and rich Emiratis. A revolutionary line of submersibles by Hervé Jobert. He soon found himself hobnobbing with Dubai's finest, including its feudal ruler, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. But when the company went under, his investors demanded nearly a million dollars in compensation. All the money that was spent was spent by them. I knew then that those people, they're nothing but gangsters. And there was no way, absolutely no way, I would pay anything to those bandits. Jobert claims to be a former French covert military operative. And his escape by boat to India was like something from a spy novel. He donned an abaya worn by Emirati women to sneak onto and disable a Navy patrol boat. I never thought in my life that one day I would be walking the lobby of a hotel in full combat gear covered with a woman's disguise. It was like being a ghost. Then he sailed out to sea in a small dinghy to a yacht that was waiting to spirit him away. I escaped on a Friday at 11, 11 o'clock in the morning when I know everybody is at the mosque. After a nervous 10 days at sea, he reached India safely and has now written a book called Escape from Dubai. I expose the truth of what is really Dubai. They are, they are not used to that. They don't want that. They want to silence people like me and what I did to them is, is worse than a crime to, to reveal that Dubai is just smoke and mirrors and, and expose their frauds and their lies. Dubai's rich and powerful insist the economy is still riding nicely thanks to its booming port and its Emirates airline. Rashid al Habtur's family owns a string of profitable hotels and construction companies. 
but he concedes Dubai may have gone too far, too fast. We should have had more a regulated market. There was so much speculation. There was so much buying and selling and trading. Dubai property market became like a stock market of just buying, just the same thing like you buy shares, buy it and sell it. Same thing happened in the property market. There was too many speculators, too many cowboys. The biggest developer was the state-owned company Dubai World. It not only built on land, it even built on sea, dredging mountains of sand for offshore developments. The grandest project was called The World. A series of artificial islands shaped as countries four kilometres out to sea. Four years ago, it was expected to become one of the biggest developments on the planet. We took a boat to see how the project has fared, sailing along artificial canals that two years earlier were desert. While security boats kept us away from the islands, it was clear the world was flat. Well, four years on, it doesn't actually look much different. Just a bunch of empty, artificial, insanely expensive islands. You can only marvel that a state-owned company ever imagined this was a good idea. At some point, I felt like this was becoming a surreal environment. I mean, the signs were there. However, once, I mean, as, as you are in it, you can't see it. You know, you have to be outside in it, outside of it. Um, and, and then, the, of course, the, the crash came uh, just like any, any sane person would have predicted. And bizarrely huge projects are still coming online. In January, Dubai completed the world's tallest building, a 160-storey tower that's 320 metres higher than its nearest rival. It's not just the peak of Dubai's achievement, many critics see it as the height of its folly. It gives a panoramic view of the empty desert and the abandoned building sites. But for Emiratis and many expatriates, it was something to celebrate. A sign that Dubai was back in business. This country has been extraordinary and it is still on the move and it's still on the rise. Dreams definitely can come true in Dubai, without a doubt. Derek Khan is a Jamaican-born fashion designer who moved here from the US. The good thing about the recession, it got rid of a lot of the trash from the country, straight up. You come here for a greedy purpose, you come here to better yourself. But at the same time, you have to understand the culture and give back to what is good to you. This country has been extraordinarily kind to me. I have no intentions of moving, I, I love it, and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else other than Dubai. <laughs> I love the show. Derek Kahn makes his money at the top end of town. A former stylist for Madonna, he's been adopted by the Emirati elite, despite a checkered past. But that looks perfect on you. He spent two years in prison in New York after pawning borrowed jewelry to pay mounting debts. It was a very stupid, ridiculous thing I did, and guess what? It was a scheme to defraud, and in the US, that is a serious crime. Another Azadi. They asked me to design a collection of jewel, uh, jewels. I thought, hold on a second. <laughs> what do you want? You know, my first impression was like, no, this is not happening. It was completely upfront and true. They told me they knew who I was and they had understood what had happened. And basically, everyone deserves a second chance. And I was great enough to, they were great enough to give it to me. This is the strange duality of Dubai. All Emiratis have to follow the same criminal and Sharia laws. 
but Dubai's elite loves to indulge in what some would call Western decadence. And it usually turns a blind eye to what foreign business people do behind closed doors. But when offences are brought to the attention of police, the results can be shocking, as we found during our filming. A distraught British woman reported to police that she'd been raped by a waiter at her engagement party. Police quizzed her about sharing a room with her fiancé, and she was charged with having sex outside marriage. But even more disturbing than cases like this is the way the scales of justice are balanced. What you're about to see almost defies belief. This is not a reenactment. It's a home video of an Emirati sheikh torturing a debtor. His name is Issa bin Zayed Al Nayyan, a member of the country's royal family. His victim, an Afghan grain merchant named Shapur. The sheikh ordered police to bring Shapur to his farm in Abu Dhabi. They stood by as he filled Shapur's mouth with sand, fired bullets around him, and drove a car over him. Sheikh Al Nayyam was so proud of himself, he rang his business partner, a Lebanese American, Bassam Nabulsi, to boast of what he'd done. He was telling me all about what he did. And honestly, it was so uh, unbelievable, I disregarded it, I dismissed it. Uh, I didn't think it's true. But shortly after he hung up, my brother called me and said, uh, we have a man that is dying in the farm and we have to take him to the hospital. That was five years ago. But Sheikh Al Nayan wasn't even charged until his former partner Nabulsi released the tape publicly during a bitter business dispute. The Sheikh hired a prominent lawyer, Habib Al Mullah, to mount a seemingly impossible defense. We believe that that film is totally distorted and tampered with. Are you suggesting the tape was doctored or computer altered? Or? That could be one way. I'm sure that uh, today there are a lot of softwares that can achieve such a result. But the tape does show him doing things like firing a gun, putting sand in his face, what appears very much to be torture. We totally deny that. Dr. Al Mullah claimed Nabulsi and his brother were the real culprits. He accused them of drugging the Sheikh to make him behave this way so they could blackmail him. Our client was not in a mental capacity that be, he, he be held liable for that, his actions. The court not only found the Sheikh not guilty, it issued an arrest warrant for Nabulsi in the US. Well, to start with, his acquittal is a joke. I mean, the royal family of the UAE managed to make a big mockery of their own judicial system with such an acquittal. I mean, the man is guilty 100%. And to be acquitted and in turn also, I turn out to be the bad guy, that's unbelievable. If you can be caught on videotape sticking a cattle prod into someone's anus, uh, running over someone with a SUV, and then uh, be acquitted and the individual who released the tape to the world is convicted, uh, I would say that, that's, that that justice system is really non-existent. And the justice system in Abu Dhabi and in the UAE uh, is truly a joke. If there's rough justice for rich foreigners, there's no justice for the poor. Most of the expatriate population are construction workers from South Asia. They live in squalid compounds like this, out of sight of the wealthy. And they've been the biggest losers from the property collapse. Hello. Hello. Osman. How are you? Pleased to meet you, sir. So, this is where you all sleep. Yes, How many people? 18 people. 18 people in this room. These Bangladeshi workers came here to make money to send home to their families. 
Now only two of them have jobs and even they haven't been paid in six months. I mean, if you have a job, you don't have to pay for a job. 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 ना खेल एक बेला खाई दो बेला खाई ना वही कुनो मदर टूटी किने खाई एक एक भाभी हमारे जीवन दस्त है जीवन खूब कष्ट है तो जीवन दस्त है हमारे All want to return home but they can't the construction companies took their passports and are now demanding they buy them back police police के बाले police बाला कोड़ा जाओ बाला उके ना फाइल तैयार कराओ एकरो, शेकरो, कुमारी ते के फास्फोर नहीं आशो, वाह, हमारे टाका नहीं, हमरा किबे बस जाबो, टैक्सी किबे बनी बाबो, गाड़ी को तो जाबो, हमरा सीनी ना। But for some foreigners, the good times continue to roll. Every Friday, Derek Khan takes to the water in Abu Dhabi to enjoy the Muslim holiday. Thanks to oil, Abu Dhabi is the richest state in the United Arab Emirates. And it's loaned $25 billion to its brash neighbour to service its astronomical debt. Oh my god, I just caught it! Oh no. Like Derek Khan, Dubai has been given a second chance. Is that reassuring for people here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, after the bad press and everything that started coming, obviously we were all afraid there might be a rush on the banks and all of that. But no, um, Abu Dhabi came to the rescue. And as we say here, alhamdulillah. It remains to be seen what lessons have been learned from this debt fueled binge. Those who fled Dubai or are caught in its harsh legal system will only see this as a place of nightmares. But for some, this strangest of desert states remains a city of dreams. <laughs>